Hello, how's it going? Today, I wanted to share with you my favorite way to store my photos, and it's not really what you think. Although if you saw the thumbnail of this video, then you probably know exactly what it is. So we tend to post our best photos on Instagram and then the rest of the photos we take kind of like live on our hard drive and don't make it anywhere, which is kind of sad. One of my favorite ways to store photos is by making these photo books. So I wanted to talk about these photo books today and share some insight into how you guys can print your photos like this and make these little tiny memory books. And a couple of weeks ago, I asked you guys if you had any questions about making these photo books on Instagram. And so I'm going to answer those in today's video. I fucking love layout. I always have loved layout. Like as a designer, that's like, that was always my favorite thing was page layout for whatever reason. I loved it. Like when I worked at the marketing company, I loved laying out annual reports brochures, magazines. I, I love layout, page layout, it's my favorite. And even though these aren't complicated, they're just like basically squares and rectangles all over the place. It's just really fun to like see it come together and see it get printed and hold it and flick through it. And unfortunately this paper doesn't smell as good as some other papers that I smell, but yeah. So family memories tend to get lost. And if you guys are like me, when I go on a trip, I shoot photos specifically for Instagram landscapes. I take time and set up these shots. And I'm also snapping off these random memories of photos of Chris and I together smiling at the camera or random photos of Chris doing stuff or random photos of my family members. I like to put them in my photo books. So these books are not just filled with my best photos. They're also filled with memories as well. By the way, this video is not sponsored. The way I think about my photo books is I think of them per trip or per event. So if we go on a trip to say Arizona, which is this one here, and we went to the Grand Canyon, Sedona, Page, and Scottsdale, so all of that is in this book. My best photos, my memory photos, and also iPhone pictures. And I have done them all with the exact same type, same color spine, and same kind of layout. So it has the date, the location, black spine, same size type, same color, everything. So when they're on the shelf, they all match and they all look nice. And the covers are also pretty much laid out all the same too. I'm using the same font, same type of layout. They look cute up on the shelf and they're fun to pull down every now and then and go through. And especially those iPhone shots that kind of sit on your phone and you take them and you look at them and they never see the light of day again they're fun to add into these books too. I'm using a company called Blurb to get my books printed. This is not sponsored. I've paid for all these books. I wish it was sponsored because these are expensive. There are a couple of quirks that I don't love. Sometimes the covers, there's some weird streaks on them. I'm assuming that's from the coating that's making it matte. I have noticed in my most recent books, not, and I've never noticed this in the past, that there were some like lines. So I'm gonna have to reach out to Blurb and see if they'll, maybe replace that book or make sure that doesn't happen in the next order. Okay, so let's go through a couple of tips. So when you're laying out books, I like to go per trip. I find that's the easiest thing to do. Otherwise they get very fat and very expensive. In terms of curating the photos, I pick my best photos, I pick memories, and I take my iPhone photos. I don't put everything that I've shot in here. I just pick the best stuff with the best memories. Of course, sometimes you shoot off four or five pictures of somebody smiling, you pick the best one. I go by time as well. So if we go to a place, say Hawaii, we went to Hawaii and Maui, I start at the book from the very first day and I go all the way to the last day of the trip. So they're all in order for the most part, except for all the iPhone photos are at the back. Again, in terms of design, I make sure that all of my books have a cohesive spine and have cohesive covers. And that's just, to me, is just satisfying to do it that way. Of course, you don't have to do it like that, but the designer in me feels like they need to look like a set and it's satisfying. So that's what I do. So you want your font choices to stand the test of time because in, you know, 10 years, you don't want to look at it and be like, Oh, pick something nice. Okay, with the mobile photos, I like to put them in a grid in the back. So back in the day when you could only post square photos on Instagram, I put all square grids in the back of my books. So in the newer books where Instagram started uh, allowing us to post vertical photos, that's when I started adding vertical photos in the back. So you're not getting as many photos, but you are still getting photos. And this one kind of smells funky. I don't know why. Usually paper smells fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna put these books down and we're gonna go through some of your questions. Gorin.jpg is asking, how do you design the layout of the photo books? What software would you recommend? So in terms of layouts, Blurb has a plugin for InDesign. Of course, as you guys know, I am a designer. So I use the Blurb plugin for InDesign and custom layout all of my books to the way I like it. And then I send them a PDF. Okay, Anthony Steven Garcia is asking, how 
to aesthetically lay out multiple pictures on one page, especially with different crop sizes. So I basically come up with a, a couple of layouts of how I like to show my photos. Some of the memories, I don't give them dedicated pages. So I've got a couple of different grids using horizontal photos, some where I can put vertical photos, and then some that's a mix of horizontal and vertical photos. Now, for my larger pictures, the ones that I feel like they could be printed bigger, that could be wall hangers, I dedicate a page or a full spread to those photos. Okay, my girl Kitty at Tola Visuals says, what paper is best? Also best settings for exporting the photo before printing. I would always recommend if you're using a printer to look on their website to see if they have any specific profiles to use. Um, I like to use specifically through Blurb, the Proline Uncoated Stock. It definitely gives your photos a little more of a dustier look, not as deep blacks because it is an uncoated stock. A coated stock or a pearl stock um, I don't remember, a luster I think is the other one they have, will give you much richer blacks and probably more contrasty images. I just prefer the uncoated stock because I like the feeling of it and I like the way it looks. So look on the website to see if they have any profiles. Um, it will depend on the printer and the paper as well. The Liam men asked, a chat about curation would be good. Reason for choosing the photos you chose. Do you pick slash order the images based on aspect ratio, tones, colors, is it chronological? So I process my photos for my books the way I feel like that trip felt or the way that trip should be represented. And that means that they do not look the way they look on our Instagram, which is obviously all dark and moody. Some of them look like that, but you know, when we went to the Bahamas, Arizona, Hawaii, all those photos are really punchy and colorful and I didn't want to suck the colors out of that for my own memory. So I processed those photos to look the way I thought they should look based on the way the trip felt. In terms of curation, again, I'm going through all my photos and picking my best shots. I'm also picking nice memories. Of course, like I said, if I have, you know, five or six photos of Chris and he's doing the same thing, I maybe pick one or two of my favorites and I put those in the book. And in terms of aspect ratios, it depends on the pages and what photos are up next in order of the trip. But I have about five or six different types of layouts that I use, which you can see here. And um, that's kind of how I lay out my books. Okay, Christoph's Gallery is asking, do you use the original photo sizes or do you use a cropped version? And do you completely re-edit them for your own photo books? It depends if the photo needs to be cropped in order to make me happy, I will use the cropped version or I'll use the full size version, it depends. I don't crop them all vertically for my books. If some of them are landscape, I leave them landscape. Sometimes I will crop them even more panoramic to fit in the layout if I want. If you're printing your books, you wanna make sure that if you're cropping your photos, you're not cropping in too much that when you print it, it's gonna turn out pixelated or a lower resolution. And if you don't understand resolution, we actually made a video about it a couple of years ago, I'll link it up here. Just check that out before you start printing your stuff. Ever, ever evolved, I'm so sorry. I want to know, do you pick and choose which photos you add to a photo book and what your workflow in achieving that is? Import all my photos through Lightroom. I go through and one star the shots that I like and I take out the ones that are either out of focus or overexposed or just not great shots composition wise, go one star through the whole set of photos and then I start picking out my favorites from there and then I'll edit them. Now, my workflow for Instagram is I'll go all the way up to five stars and pick between one and five shots from the set that I've shot for Instagram and I'll edit them a certain way, but my two star, three star photos are the ones that usually end up in the book. So photos that I like that aren't necessarily Instagram worthy, they aren't necessarily banger or photos, if you will. Then I edit all of those to the way I feel like they should look, as I mentioned, and then I export all of them at a high resolution for print, and then I lay out my books in InDesign. Okay, Sam in AB is asking, how do you do titles in Blurb? I find the tool on the site a bit clunky, so I sometimes end up adding it in Photoshop first. Do you do this too? I, like I said, I use the Blurb book builder for InDesign, so I do all my text layouts and stuff in InDesign, which allows me to customize everything, including the titles, the spine, whatever font I wanna use that's you know, that I've installed on my computer. So I haven't had that issue only because I have not used the online builder, but there's nothing wrong with adding the text in in Photoshop. Just make sure that it's the correct resolution so it doesn't come out pixelated when it's printed. That's how I make my photo books. I always get the image wrap because I like the way it looks. This is the layout I always do. So I have my cover, then their paper, then I do the cover text, exactly how it shows on the cover, except for a bit smaller, just on white. And then I always leave this page blank and I start with whatever photo has been on the cover. And then, like I said, at the back, I always put the mobile shots. 
because that's a nice little treat. Well, I hope that helped you guys. Uh, I don't know, nobody asked for this video. I like holding them, I like looking at them, the feel of them. I love it when my family comes over and they take one off the shelf and they look at it. Everything in here is just nice memories. It's a nice way to kind of bundle everything up. Photos from your phone, photos from your camera, photos from whoever, whatever you wanna do, you can do. And you can really have fun with it if you wanna get funky with the layouts. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post videos. See you on the next one. Too far away. God, I'm tired. I love this one too. This one is one of my favorites. It's so Newfoundland. Just us at Cape Spear with a big Jesus wave. Look at that color. Look at that color. See, I can do color.